Good evening and welcome to Growing Up Strong. I'm your host, Tony May. If you were with us last week, you got a chance to meet a rock star when it comes to early childhood learning. His name is Dr. Jack Shonkoff. He's the director for the Center on Developing Child from Harvard University. Tonight, we're gonna to continue that interview with a special look at what it takes to make a child care center good and great for your child. Here's our interview. Dr. Shonkoff, talk about child care centers specifically. We, your research shows that that interaction is important anywhere, anywhere, as we've discussed, and a lot of children spend a lot of time in child care centers. What's a quality child care center look like? So uh, the essential ingredients of a quality, a high quality child care center um, have to do with uh, the skills and the attributes of the people who work there, right? So people who work in child care centers obviously have to know something about child development. They have to know what you do for an 18-month-old as opposed to a three-year-old as opposed to a four-year-old. But it's not just um, kind of academic knowledge about child development. It's the ability to engage with a child, have interactions that are positive, responsive, and also to develop a relationship with the parents who are bringing their child to the center and picking the child up at the end of the day. So it all comes down to, if you, if you, if you want to know how would you evaluate a mm -hmm. center, it starts with the people who work there who work with the kids. Um, how do they interact with the kids? Are they individualizing their interactions with different kids because there are going to be a lot of different kinds of kids in the center? And do they know enough about child development to be able to provide appropriate activities and experiences for the kids. Um, there are a lot of things that we add on to that um, from a standards point of view. You know, what's the ratio of adults to kids? What's the, how, how big should the group be? Do they have good materials? Are there appropriate toys? Is the environment, obviously the environment physically needs to be safe. Um, you don't want injuries that are preventable. Um, all of those things are important, but everything is trumped by the people, right? This is, so the key ingredient is the people. And the unfortunate thing is that we have done over the last several decades, we periodically survey the quality of child care centers in the country and it's very variable. We have a lot of high quality child care, we have a lot of child care that's perfectly adequate, and we have an unacceptable high percentage of child care that is just not adequate um, in terms of basic safety and in terms of the responsiveness and the interactions. And it was the most recent study came out a month ago and showed, among other things, that there's a large percentage of childcare providers who are on food stamps and who are close to being eligible for public assistance. These are, now remember, these are people working full time. Right, right, right. Working full time and are eligible for food stamps. They don't have enough, they don't make enough money to have enough food on the table for their own families, right? That's how bad it is. We, the, the quality of the, the pay and the conditions, we pay childcare providers in some settings less than we pay animal handlers who work in places that are taking care of animals or uh, custodians in some places. So not only does it create a problem in terms of recruitment and retention, it's making a statement that we don't think this is really that important, right? And that's a problem because it is very important for everything we know. So how about does somebody change that? How does a community change that if there isn't a, you know, standards? I mean, is that where the community needs to get involved? programs need to get involved? So the first thing, obviously, and this is where public understanding is really important, and um, putting that knowledge in the heads of people who make decisions about how resources get allocated. Um, it starts with understanding how it's not a, good enough to just have a warm body mm -hmm. watching kids. Now, it also varies depending upon the kids. So children who grow up in homes that are providing a lot of what kids need could, um, get, could tolerate poor quality care better than kids who are in homes that are kind of living at the margins. But ironically, the kids who live in good homes, not always, but generally, are in good quality childcare right, because their families sense. can afford right. it, right? And for families that have, actually the most vulnerable are families that are above the poverty level, but in the low income level because they're not eligible for subsidies. And they have to pay for it themselves and they can't pay for good quality care. But if you look, if you basically look at the economics, the major subsidy for childcare in this country is not government monies. Most of childcare is paid for by parents out of their own pocket and childcare providers who work for very low wages. I mean, I don't have an answer to how to fix that problem, but I do have an answer to say that if we don't fix it, 
we're creating a breeding ground for another generation that is not going to do as well in school, not going to be as economically productive. Some end up in jail who wouldn't end up in jail. And so it's not very smart. We have to get beyond a mindset that thinks of childcare as babysitting. Exactly. Right? It's not, it's not babysitting. Um, for some people it's babysitting, but for children who are disadvantaged, and if we think of it as babysitting, forget what, it's not so much even that it may be harmful, but we are missing the opportunity to make a big difference in producing better outcomes. We're missing it. It's right in our face. So it all starts right there, your first day in daycare. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't want to overstate it, but I don't want to understate it. It's like child care, kids who spend lots of time in child care, that is affecting their development. So, you know, we're talking a lot about the parents, the caretakers, but beyond that, the business community, the community, you know, that, that should invest in this, why? Right. So actually, there's, there's, there's one answer to that question that most people are talking about, and there's another answer that nobody's talking about. So let me start with the first one. Um, every business person knows, every business person who has employees with young children knows that if the employee's children are okay during the day, the employee performs better on the job. Um, so this is another reason why access to good childcare is critical. This issue in a general sense has always been part of the early childhood story. If we kind of build a good base in early childhood, we'll get better educational outcomes, more economic productivity, and that's true. But there's another dimension, and this is another example of using science to think in a different way. So as we've been starting to use these kind of new insights from science about how executive function and self-regulation skills get built early in life. These are the skills of you know, being able to just solve problems, focus your attention, um, shift gears when the rules change. Um, these are skills that, that develop, a big part of these skills, the foundation of them develops between the ages of three and five. And it actually starts before then with attention. Differences. We see differences in the first year of life in children's ability to focus their attention based on how organized or chaotic the environment is in which they live. Good science for that, even brain imaging showing that, and common sense would say that. So as these skills start to get built, what it means is that uh, parents and sometimes very low paid childcare providers who don't have good organizational skills of their own, not because they don't care, but because they grew up in an environment where the adults didn't have those skills, so generation after generation, we have people, even if you have basic reading skills, you can't organize to solve problems very well. You can't kind of defer gratification and plan for something that is going to happen six months from now, a year from now. So we started to think about how those skills get built in young children and how that needs to be built into what we help parents do and how we prepare child care providers and realized that where it's not working well is because the adults don't have the adult versions of those capabilities not well organized, not good planners, not good problem solvers. And so we started to think about, well, can we build those skills in adults who don't have, who didn't get a good foundation? And the science tells us actually that part of the brain and those skills don't fully mature until age 25 to 30 years. So wow. we have a window still. And what we also know is that those skills don't just come in automatically. They get, they get built. They get built by coaching, practice, scaffolding, adults kind of model those skills for you. And so we look at the, some of the parenting things we're doing and we're saying, well, giving people information works for some, but for others, giving information doesn't work. We need to coach. We need to coach these skills. We need to work much more actively with the parents and the child care providers who don't have those skills. So they could be better parents and better caregivers. And as we started to think about those skills and work on them, we realized that that these, these capabilities are not just for parenting. They're the same capabilities you need to get a job, mm -hmm. right? To be able to solve problems, to kind of shift gears, to focus your attention, to work, work in a team. And so we started to think that these programs that are focusing on parenting skills could also be for the same money building employability skills mm -hmm. for people who are either unemployed or can only have jobs that require very little capability. And so here's another opportunity. And the business community has a huge amount to gain from this, as 
does the whole public. Is we spend a lot of money, uh, not only the money we spend on childcare, we spend a lot of money on workforce programs. We spend money on trying to do job training for adults who lost their jobs but have little skills. Here's a wonderful opportunity, and a good example, maybe the poster child for new thinking about this. The brain science and understanding how these skills develop and understand how these develop over time should tell us that we should be in, one, in the same place we should be working on parenting and employability for people living in poverty. Okay? Because even if you can teach parenting, improve parenting skills for people who have limited education, if they don't get out of poverty and they can't get jobs, we haven't Doesn't solved the matter. problem, right? So then we say, okay, so we'll send them to the job program, and then we'll send them to the parenting program. We could get more efficient, better bang for our buck by working on programs that build basic foundational capabilities to be a successful adult, that, undermine, that underlie parenting, that underlie employability, that underlie being a productive member of a community, it's that ability to control your impulses, focus your attention, delay gratification, solve problems, work in teams. Here's a whole new way of thinking about how to use public funds, mm -hmm. how to integrate services better, not just talk about interagency agreements. And everything comes back to this is where the business community has a huge stake. Everything we talk about in terms of child development and foundations for health is about building human capital. Mm -hmm. It's building, this is the science of building human capital. People who are educated, who, have, who, can, who can manage their behavior and work in teams and, and work toward a common goal, and who are physically and mentally healthy. So I don't want to get grandiose about this, but the early roots of, of problems we deal with in every one of these areas is embedded very early in life, and for the most part, we haven't been paying much attention to that. And we haven't been using this new science we have. And this just opens up a whole new way of thinking about these things. And that's, that's part of what our center's all about. To say, you know, don't feel that this is futile. Don't feel that poverty is, is inevitable. I mean, you know, it, it's not like we're gonna wave a magic wand. Right. But like, we have some new ideas. We have some new knowledge. We could be doing things in a better way Let's roll up our sleeves and use some ingenuity and creativity and let's work at this until we master it. And let's not be, let's not give up if the first thing we try doesn't work. That's not what made this country what it is. This, you know, space program, everything else, I mean, the, it starts with failures. When, 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 when Apple decided to make something better than the Walkman, they didn't go from that and the next day invent right. the iPod, right? And I don't know, I don't know how it, the inside of those companies work, but I know from every big breakthrough is it comes after lots of failures. You know, Thomas Edison, who I think still may have the record for the most patents of anyone in this country, said, I've never failed at anything, but I found 10,000 things that don't work, right? It's like, this is part of what, what our country thrives on, is we stick at it until we solve a problem. We've got new knowledge, we've got some problems that we need to address, we need to bring that same attitude and that same dogged persistence to the early childhood arena. So you heard in my interview with Dr. Sean Koff how important it is to invest in early childhood learning centers. And even more importantly, to invest in programs that truly work and are based on a history of data-driven results. Well, right here in Palm Beach County, we are lucky to have all of that. And joining me now are two guests that are gonna tell me why we have it and how successful it is. Welcome, Erin Gallagher, Thank Program you. Officer with Children's Services Council. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. And Debbie Conley, you run a program that assesses these child care centers and really lets us know what's going on inside them. Welcome. Thank you. Erin, first, let's start in the big picture. Um, in Palm Beach County, we were talking before the show, and based on what Dr. Shonkoff said, we're doing the right things. Kind of talk about, you know, the programs we have here. Absolutely. So... What Dr. Shankoff talked about was so important, that there really needs to be an, an early investment in children, and we've done that with our work with our Strong Mind system. So we put a lot of effort and supports into our early learning programs in this county because we want families to feel comfortable knowing that their children are going to a quality environment. 
Um, we do that in terms of scholarships that we offer to teachers, technical assistance that goes into the classrooms to really offer ideas and new ways of doing things that will help the teacher to feel supported and help the children to really thrive in that classroom. Let's talk, because he talked and you mentioned about really developing those child care workers. You know, some of them are paid less, as you heard, than a janitor. Um, what do you all think, and you're the experts, what do you think it will take to change the mindset that these women and men should be held up in high regard like a teacher in a public school or a teacher at a university because they're just as important based on research in developing our child? So I think a lot of that is really increasing that knowledge base that early is better, that you can't wait until children go to kindergarten, that you need to start at the earliest, earliest ages. And now that there's so much research and so much knowledge about the amount of learning that happens with children from birth to five, I think word is starting to get out. But I think we have to continue to beat that drum to really let families know and also the public at large know that putting the investment in early makes a world of difference for our community. And it's exciting that we have learned that and we're really applying that in this county. Now, Debbie, it's your job to make sure that applying that is actually working. You and your team go into these centers and you observe. Yes. Tell me what you observe. So we, we observe a, a variety of different things. We look at the environment, we look at health and safety issues, but we also look at teacher-child interactions, which research is showing us is the most important thing. Um, so the way teachers talk with children, the way teachers have um, physical touching with children, um, eye contact is important, the way that you um, talk through different things w during the learning process with children, and then encouraging children to also talk about what they're doing. So lots of grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles watching, say they're the caretaker foster parents of a child and they're looking at centers and sadly they don't get to take you along. What's some of what they should be looking at as far as the basics when they're going to leave their child there seven, eight hours a day? Okay, so they really need to look at the teacher-child interaction. They need to look at, for instance, in the infant room, when you're changing an infant's diaper, it's not just the routine of changing the diaper. It's talking to the infant about what you're doing while you're while you're changing that diaper, talking to, to the infant about the environment and things in the environment while you're changing the diaper. So every single part of the day is a learning experience for the child. In the preschool classroom, it's looking at the proximity of the teacher to the children. Um, if the teacher is talking with the child while they're building blocks, for instance, or while they're playing in housekeeping. It looks like play, but it's all learning. And Erin, we talked about kind of this community embracement of, of this kind of thing, a quality child care center. Do you feel in your expert opinion and working in this county for a long time that Palm Beach County gets that? I think Palm Beach County does get that. I think not just from a family standpoint, but also from a public standpoint, they know that if these children get the right start, they're going to be successful members of our community. And I think especially for families now, they really are becoming knowledgeable consumers about what quality looks like and what they should want for their children. And, and that's a key. I think as long as we continue to grow that, um, we'll, we'll continue to see further and further success in early learning. And um, growing that, what does that take? You, you've been in these centers, I mean all of them with your team. The ones that are kind of there, can they grow to be here? I think they can. I think everybody can. I think, you know, it's, it's a few simple things. One is educating the teaching staff and educating those who run the child care centers. I, I really believe and I've found it to be true that when teachers know better, they do better. So it, we talked earlier about talking with infants while they're while you're diaper changing. A very simple thing to do. Right. Everybody can do that. You need to know you need to do that. You need to know that that's important to do. So whose responsibility is that? So it's the, the child care director. You go in and say, hey, we kind of maybe work in this area a little. And then they work with their people? Or do you go in and kind of work with their people? Describe that scenario. Um, it's it's we're really looking more at empowering the director okay. to be the leader of the center. Okay. So we give them the tools and Children's Services Council gives them the tools as far as education for their teachers. Um, the assessment is a really important tool. From there, they develop a, a quality improvement plan that focuses on what the director and the teachers want to work on okay. once they're given that knowledge about what they can improve on. Um, and then the supports are there to help the director um, nurture her staff 
and bring the staff along. So we've talked about kind of the pieces to the puzzle. Why is it important that those pieces fit together for the future of that child when he goes to kindergarten or she goes to kindergarten? So we've seen, and the research has proven time after time, that getting children ready for school takes a lot of effort. It Amen. Takes, yeah. <laughs> Talk to any parent. It exactly. definitely does. <laughs> and speaking as a mom, I know it takes a lot of, of effort. And you, know, you end up appreciating so deeply everything that happens in the early childhood program that your children attend. There is so much that can be done and so many little things like Debbie talked about, like talking to infants when you change their diaper, getting down on a child's level, to really ask them some open-ended questions about what they're doing and what their play is about and what their thoughts are that encourage their, encourages their language and their thinking skills. And all of those things, the more you develop them when they're early, the stronger that they will be when they enter school as far as their ability to develop their thoughts, to communicate, to stay with a task. But those skills start early because you want to build those habits and create that foundation. And I, I, I know you were in the classroom at one time, mm -hmm. so you kind of have a feel for what it's like. What alleviate guilt is what I'm going to ask you. You know, people are watching going, oh, well, I don't know. I didn't look at my center and I'm not sure it's like that. But, but if you have them in a place that people are warm and loving and, like you said, interacting, guilt should be gone, right, for the parent or the grandparent or the foster parent that may feel that way because they have to go to work. You know, some people believe that a child needs only one primary caregiver, but you don't want to have a whole bunch of primary caregivers, but a few good, high-quality caregivers are very important in a child's life. So they have the mother and or the father and the grandparents when they're at home. But if you have them in a quality child care center, they also have a lot of adults there who become also close uh, primary caregivers for the infant and the child and give them other experiences that parents can't. And then they also have interactions with other children, which are important. I was going to mention that parents role in all of this. Um, touch on that. Um, there is some parent responsibility when it comes to making sure that that interaction and then that follow-up from the day is happening. I think, you know, when, when a parent drops their child off at a preschool program or a child care center, it's really important that they go into the classroom. It's really important that they greet the teacher, and it's really important that the child has a teacher who greets the parent and the child when they come to in, in the morning, and that the parent helps the child get settled in the morning. That goes a long way to ensuring that that child is in a good place for learning throughout the day. So wrapping it up, are you hopeful, are you um, confident that the, the significant um, steps that have been made for Strong Minds and, and, the, and the success is going to continue here in Palm Beach County through CSC? Absolutely confident. I think we have seen sites that really have come such a long way who have been a part of our system and new sites coming in that are really interested. So it's wonderful for parents to have choices in the county. And it's wonderful to have sites where teachers and directors will come up to you and go, gosh, this is a much easier way to do this and so much better. And we're really seeing such differences in our children and the excitement that generates from that. So I think only continued wonderful things. Awesome. Well, thank you both. We could talk all night. As a parent, I wish I knew any of this 20 years ago, but thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. And as a parent or a grandparent, if you want more information on what to look for if you're assessing child care centers or if you have one now, you can see the website. Just go on the CSC website. They have great tips you can take down. As always, thank you for joining us on Growing Up Strong, and we'll see you next time.